Phillips curve came about when an economist called Bill Phillips studied inflation and unemployment data across a large number of different countries and found a negative correlation between the two. And logically, this should make sense as well, because when inflation is high up here, this often means that the economy is overheating, operating near to its full capacity, particularly if it's demand pull pressures dragging price levels up. In this situation, the demand for labour will be high because labour demand is derived from the amount of output that's being produced. That higher demand for labour means more employment and most likely lower rates of unemployment. If the economy is in a downturn though, with higher rates of unemployment, there will be less demand pull pressure on price level and so inflation will be lower or potentially even negative down here in the situation of deflation. It was actually quickly pointed out that this relationship only really held in the short run and so became known as the short run Phillips curve. The long run Phillips curve is argued to be vertical at what's known as the non accelerating inflation rate of unemployment or NIRU. Sometimes that's known as the natural rate of unemployment. And the reason for this is because if we can add a short run Phillips curve onto the same diagram and imagine that the economy is initially operating at the NIRU, say that's 5% unemployment. And on the diagram, the rate of inflation is 1%. Imagine we get a government that wants to bring down unemployment using some expansionary fiscal policies and they get that down to 3%. The trade-off in the short run is that they have to accept inflation rising up here to 4%. And now the problem with this is that over time, the higher inflation expectations mean that workers demand higher wages to compensate for the hit to their living standards that that higher inflation is providing. And those higher wage demands increase the cost of employing workers, which decreases short run aggregate supply, decreases the demand for labor and pushes unemployment back to its natural level or the NIRU at this now higher rate of inflation at 4%. So the short run Phillips curve has now shifted back towards the right. You might think that this sounds familiar to the classical long run aggregate supply curve, and that's absolutely right. It's the same forces that cause that rising GDP and price level in the short run when aggregate demand increases and then returning to the full employment output in the long run at the vertical long run aggregate supply curve. The policy implications of the short run Phillips curve are that governments face that classic trade off between inflation and unemployment. They can either accept higher inflation in exchange for bringing down unemployment with expansionary policies, or they can keep inflation low using contractionary policies and accept that unemployment will be higher as a result. This trade off doesn't exist in the long run, though. Whereas we've seen attempts to lower unemployment below its natural level, trigger accelerating inflation, and then the economy returns to the natural level anyway. And so the argument of the long run Phillips curve would be to focus on supply side improvements to the economy, rather than trying to tinker with unemployment or inflation using demand side policies. The right shift of that long run aggregate supply curve that would then come about will be reflected in a left shift of the long run Phillips curve and a new lower natural rate of unemployment.